Jamie's first idea is Microsoft. Yeah, so we, we talked about the a little bit of a panic in the big cap technology stocks. And I think now we're back at a point where these stocks screen very attractive um, on a lot of traditional metrics. And Microsoft uh, really fits the bill for one that we look at building a long-term position around at this price. Uh, you know, so following last week's results, they've really de-risked the 2023 estimates. Um, the Azure cloud services growth has, has come down a little bit, uh, given Microsoft's passing on some savings back to their customers. That's going to increase adoption and ultimately create stickier customer uh, bases longer term. And then as we get through this, we've seen softness in PCs, softness in uh, gaming. And so a lot of this is now priced into the stock. It's now trading at 22 times uh, the next 12 months earnings. And for a company that's going to grow its earnings probably 10 to 15% per year for the next five, six years, you know, this is just getting back to a, a great entry point for a company like this. Now, sure, we could see a, a further slowdown that would affect all stocks uh, or, you know, most, most companies if, if there's a recession in 2023. Um, but Microsoft, they have $40 billion in net cash on the balance sheet. And historically, we've seen when we do go through these slowdowns, these bigger companies are able to gobble up more and more market share. And then they emerge on the other side even stronger and growing even faster. So, uh, you know, at this point, we think it's a, it's a great, great company to be owning. And uh, we'd be putting new money in today. And we were buying some uh, just last week. Okay, Cogent Communications, CCOI on NASDAQ. What do they do? Yeah, so Cogent is, uh, they're really a provider of internet networking and services. And so when you think back in the 90s, everyone was talking about the uh, internet superhighway, that, that's really what Cogent has. And that's really what it was built out of the, the 2000 tech bubble. Um, after all these companies, you know, a lot of them saw went bankrupt or saw their stock prices melt down. Cogent was able to come in and swoop up these network assets at uh, pennies on the dollar. So companies that invested hundreds of millions or billions into these uh, internet networks and Cogent came in and bought them at a very, very cheap, cheap rate. And uh, that's really been the foundation of the company and it's growing uh, pretty strongly over the last decade just as internet traffic continues to grow. So think Netflix or Spotify sending you content or um, endpoint connections at data centers or office buildings. Uh, Cogent is able to provide those customers with internet access. Um, the really ex interesting part, and we actually wrote a research report on this, which viewers can find on our website, is Cogent is really taking over the Sprint wireline business from T-Mobile. And so we'll, we get into all the details on the piece, but T-Mobile is basically giving the, the business to Cogent and saying, here, fix this, it's losing money. Uh, we can't get it profitable, and Cogent has a, a four-step plan to turn it around and make it very profitable, and they see EBITDA doubling um, thanks to this acquisition over the next five years. So it's a really interesting acquisition, and uh, you know the shares yield 7%. We think it's going to grow its dividend handily over the next decade, so one that we're pretty excited about. And finally, a Canadian name, Chemtrade. Uh, uh, still got, it looks like it still has an old income trust structure or something resembling it, and uh, mm -hmm. a yield play in part? Yeah, exactly. So Chemtrade, it still is a, an income trust, and uh, it's been a, it was a company that really underperformed for years. They had a, an acquisition that, that didn't go properly, and there's lawsuits associated with it, and they racked up a very, very large legal bill, which impacted their financials for, for years. And uh, now we see the companies through that, their end markets as well, which have been pretty soft. Uh, so their specialty chemicals business, uh, those are all strong. We've seen a lot of capacity get taken out. So it's not unlike what we're seeing in other commodity sectors like the oil sector, where uh, we saw low investment for years, and now those companies are starting to reap the benefits. Chemtrade's in, in the same spot. And the really interesting part with Chemtrade is that for the first time in really a decade, they're starting to invest again in new product, new projects. And so the area they're focused on is ultra pure sulfuric acid, which is interesting because that's used to make semiconductors. And so as companies bring semiconductor fabrication back to North America, Chemtrade is building out projects to support those, those uh, efforts. And so we see the, the earnings and cash flow growing strongly over the next two, three years, 8.5% dividend, the balance sheet's in better shape. And so Chemtrade uh, should do well. Um, no matter what the economy looks like next year.